Welcome to Love, Laughter, and Limits. I'm Tom Dozier, and this lesson is The Launch, Clearing Out the Roost. This class will help you help your older child, who shouldn't be living at home, move out and experience real independence. This class explains the advice of behavior scientist and parenting expert Glenn Latham for dealing with children who just should not be living at home, but they're making no progress to becoming independent and self-sufficient. So, who should, which kids should be living at home? Well, happy minor children, grumpy minor children, even hateful, ungrateful, and mouthy minor children. In fact, the best and the worst of kids, early 18 and younger, should stay at home. Children who are under 26 and progressing toward becoming self-sufficient. Boomerang children who are back for a short stay. You know, children experiencing unforeseen trauma, job loss, divorce, illness, disability, sure. It's fine to have them at home for a while. And older children who are helping out the family or older children who have extenuating circumstances. All of these kids, it's great for them to be at home. But who should not be living at home? Well, adult children who are sponging off their mom and dad. You know, children who are 20 years old and older, not progressing toward independent living or towards self-sufficiency. Uh, possibly you've already tried the dealing with squatters class uh, method of trying to help them to move into a, a point of being more self-sufficient. Uh, kids are not paying a fair rent, utilities, food. They're un unemployed or underemployed and they often compromise the general quality of the home. They may smell bad, behave bad, and bring many unpleasant things into your home. And they may even have kids of their own that you have to care for. The problem here is that during this period from 18 to 26, children are learning either to be independent or helpless. The child that learns no matter what, what he does, that the things that he wants and needs are going to keep coming becomes satisfied to be helpless. The problem is called non-contingent reinforcement, meaning the goodies, the reinforcing payoffs, the reinforcers keep coming regardless of what the child does. There's no connection between effort and behavior and the payoff. Dr. Latham said, wrote that between the ages of 18 and 26, children are learning to either be independent or to be helpless. Every day lost to the acquisition of independence is adding to the learning of helplessness. Now there was risk in this situation and I'd like to go over that briefly just to remind you that there are risks in treating human behavior just as there are risks of treating the body. And when you go to the doctor with an infection, he doesn't give you the most powerful antibiotic possible because there are side effects and there are risks. But just as in treating the, the body, there are risks. Ignoring health problems or behavior problems has its risks also. And the greater the problem, the greater the risk. And Dr. Latham's advice is based on the science of human behavior and over 30 years of his personal experience. Now, we can predict human behavior because past behavior is the best predictor of future behavior. So last month is going to predict this next month. And doing things the same way but expecting a different result is, can be referred to as insanity. You know, we know the way it works. We shouldn't expect it to be different. Now, Dr. Latham says, or writes, the problems arise when adult children who are able to be independent choose to be at home while making no reasonable contribution for their support, nor even moving in the direction of independent living. In instances where older children are squatters, they are being done no favors to be allowed to remain at home in a state of dependency. He goes on to say that between the ages of 18 and 26, Children are learning to either be independent or to be helpless, and every day lost to the acquisition of independence is adding to the learning of helplessness. You think, well, maybe they'll just move out. That's what we would hope, right? They'll just mature, they'll grow up, and they'll move out. Dr. Latham says is that typ what typically happens is that the longer the individual remains at home enjoying the benefits of non-contingent reinforcement, meaning enjoying something for nothing, the more likely it is that the child will want to stay put and will become increasingly more difficult to get out of the home and on his own. He goes on to say 
that getting an older child out of the home and away from all the desirable things that go along with getting something for nothing can be difficult, unpleasant, and even risky. Even though making it happen will cause parents some measure of distress and anguish, it has to happen. You know, in our lesson on love, laughter, and limits, we talked about that one of the issues with love and loving our children is making a sacrifice for your child. Putting the good of the child above your own self-interest. And if you move a child out of your home who doesn't want to move out, then you will likely experience emotional pain. It may be very unpleasant for you. It may be very scary. And so you're really making a sacrifice to do this for your child if you feel it's what, your child, it's what you need to do for your child. Now, you think, you know, maybe, as I mentioned, maybe the child will grow up and just move out. Well, let me start with a nice story here. I had a friend, was talking with a friend about parenting older children. He related the story that uh, before he was married and his oldest uh, child now is 16, so this maybe 20, 25 years ago, uh, there was a man in his mid-20s who was blind and didn't have enough money to get good, a good place to live. And he said, oh yeah, you can move in with me and help pay the rent. And he would pay some and have months he couldn't pay. And he rocked on. For five years, this blind man lived with my friend. Well, my friend got engaged and he said, came home and he told, told his roommate, he said, hey, I'm getting married, you know, you're going to have to find someplace else to live. And the guy goes, oh, what am I going to do? Well, within a month, he was in a place of his own getting by. And within two years, he had uh, completed a course in massage therapy and was being a successful mas uh, massage therapist and supporting himself quite well. But part of what m motivated him to become ind truly independent was just the absolute necessity of it. So when it comes to moving your child out, the first thing you want to do is you want to set a date to have the child, for the child to have other accommodations. And then you want to pleasantly go about your own business. And Dr. Latham says that this is the best option that he has, has experienced. You know, you, can, you may also use this when maybe you don't think your child uh, have gone through a kind of the dealing with squatters and helping them be, try to become independent, but you're just about fed up with your child and you're about ready to kick them out. Well, before you kick them out, use this method. It'll take it just a little bit longer, but it'll do a lot to keep the relationship intact and keep things going smoothly and help your child move on to be a successful independent adult. Uh, and I'm talking about situations where the child may be stealing from you or behaving very poorly, uh, having, bringing drugs into the home or verbally abusive or offensive. I recommend that you use Dr. Latham's method that we're going to be talking about. Now, if assault or battery becomes a problem, you want to call the police immediately. Your rowdy, disrespectful, unruly young adult child needs to know that the laws apply to him even when he's dealing with family members. And this assault and battery includes things like pushing or shoving you. Of course, it includes hitting you. But it also includes blocking your access. If you are trying to leave your bedroom or trying to walk out of the house and your child is blocking you, then that is a form of battery. And you should call the police. And, you know, if you think this is going to happen, you should make sure that you let your son or daughter know that should some, such a thing happen, that you'll call the police. Uh, when you're dealing with this expectation that your child move out, uh, you want to avoid ultimatums. You want to avoid discussing the child's faults. You want to totally stay away from their bad choices, their bad behavior, their broken promises, their past failures. Just totally avoid the past. You want to keep your statements short and to the point and with a lot of empathy and understanding. So first thing is decide what you want and what you expect. And essentially that's that you want your child to set a date, and if the child won't set it, you're going to help them, you're going to set it, for the child to move out, and you may say within the next 
eight weeks, two months. Um, we want to give them a, a reasonable time for this to mull over with them and to, and, and to work on them. You want to stay focused on your expectation. It doesn't matter what the child's complaining, what their reasons are, how unfair it is. You want to stay focused on your expectation, which is that the child will set a date, or you'll have to set a date, by which time they're going to be moved out and have accommodations of their own. And then you want to, you want to state that expectation. They're going to complain. They're going to protest. They're going to say, this is so unfair. And you want to listen to what they're feeling and say, you know, I, I can understand this feels unfair. Yeah, I can, I can see that you're, I know you'd like to be able to keep living at home. But then you want to go back to the expectation. And if at all possible, you want to have the child pick the date and repeat the expectation. And repeating the expectation is not just about confirming that the child heard it. There's, there's mental processing. There's, there's, you know, your brain's working along trying to get the words out and there's things that happen that when a child will say what is expected of them, it increases the likelihood that they'll actually do it. Okay, so let's do a role play of going over the discussion of setting a date to move out. So I've got my uh, assistant Aaron here. Aaron, come on the screen, please. And uh, <clears throat> we're going to do two of these. The first one, we're going to have him be a reasonably cooperative kiddo. So, um, and let's say, you know, he's, you know, maybe 23 and just really needs to get out on his own. So, son, as an independent adult, it's time for you to have a place of your own. So, I need you to pick a date within the next two months when you'll have done just that, have a place of your own and have moved out. Dad, why do you want me to move out? I'm doing everything you asked me to. Well, you know, I understand that there's a lot of security staying here and a lot of risk and uncertainty moving out. But even so, I need you to pick a date uh, within the next two months when you'll have done just that. But, Dad, I don't make enough money to get an apartment. They're really expensive. I really don't want to share one with a whole bunch of other guys. You know, I know that there are a lot of issues about getting a place on your own that... Uh, that are, that are you're going to have to work through, and you're right, it is expensive to get a place of your own. Even so, I need you to pick a date uh, in the next two months when you'll have done just that. Dad, this is not fair. I'm not moving out. Well, it, I'm sorry if it, does, if it seems unfair, but I'll tell you what, why don't you think about it overnight, and we'll talk about this tomorrow. Fine. Okay, and then he goes off, right? And then the next day, he comes in. And I'm going to say, so, uh, so Aaron, uh, when have you decided, what, what's, what date have you chosen for moving out? <sighs> two months from now. And uh, that'd be great, two months from now. Uh, so what, what date is that? What's the date? Dad. Just want to make sure we're clear. March 23rd. Great. March 23rd it is. So, you know, thank you a lot. And I, I know there's a lot that you have to work through. If there's some things you want to talk about with me or mom, we'd be glad to uh, talk it over with you because we want you to be successful in this. And we really wish you well. Thanks, son. And then he's going to go on off and he may act like he's doing nothing, but I need to just continue and assume that that date's going to happen. So, so come on back. We're now, we now have a reasonably hostile son. This is our hostile Aaron here. So, um, so Aaron, you know, as an adult, it's time for you to move out and get a place of your own. Dad, I'm not moving out. I like it here, and this is where I'm going to stay. Well, you know, I, I know that this is a kind of a... that you like it here. I know that you like living here at home, but even so, we need you to pick a date within the next two months when you'll have moved out and have a place of your own. Dad, I'm not going to pick a date because I'm not moving out. Well, I can, I can see that this is a upsetting subject and I uh, think I probably need to give you some time to think about it. So why don't you, why don't you think about it overnight and uh, we'll pick a date tomorrow. Yeah, we'll, we'll see about that. Thanks, son. Okay, then he goes off. You don't have to go off. So here we are the next day. So 
I'm going to say, okay, so Aaron, um, about moving out, what date have you chosen? Dad, I'm not moving out. Well, you know, I know you really want to stay here, but since it seems that you're unwilling to pick a date, I'll pick one for you. Uh, six weeks from today, that'll be March the 10th. Dad, you can't make me move out. I'm not leaving here. Well, I understand you really want to stay here, but it's time for you to move out, and so your mom and I are going to have the locks changed and we'll install a security system. A security system? Locks? That's not going to stop me. I'll come in through a window, I'll come in through the door. This is where I'm going to stay. You know, uh, you could do that. You could, you could break down the door and you could come in through the windows. But if you do, you'll be breaking and entering, and that's against the law, and we'll report it to the police as a crime, which it will be. Dad, you're kicking me out of the house. Why do you hate me? You just want to be with Mom on your own and me out of the picture. You know, I, I know this is upsetting, but I'm glad you, you know that we expect you to get a place of your own. By what date? By March the 10th. Thank you, son. Fine. You know what? I'll just move out tonight. You obviously don't want me or need me here. Okay. And he goes off in a huff, and maybe he does, but, but if he wants to stay at the house that long, much, he's going to use all six weeks. And then I just go about my business um, looking to get quotes on a security system and seeing what it takes to get the locks changed, and maybe I'll need to do that, and maybe I won't. Okay, Aaron, thank you very much. Appreciate your help. Okay, so did you notice the fact that when we were talking and having this discussion, I didn't go into a lot of reasons and we didn't get into a, a discussion as to why or all of, my, all of his past faults or the fact that he's broken so many promises, I can't trust him anymore. I didn't call him uh, a liar, uh, didn't say that you can't be trusted, I didn't say that he is uh, hopeless that I've given up on him. I just dealt with the expectation that it's time for him to set a date where he can move out and be an independent individual, an independent adult. Let me talk to you about, uh, tell you some of the things that Dr. Latham has said about this because some of these get very difficult and very, uh, a lot of emotion, a lot of pain and, and things from the kids. So here's what Dr. Latham has said. I've worked with many, many parents whose children have threatened to take their lives if they didn't get their way. But when parents demonstrate to children using the kind of responding that I've illustrated, in my nearly 35 years of doing this, never has a child committed suicide. Never. Is this to say that it would never happen? No, I suppose not. It's just that it has never occurred with any of the people with whom I've worked. And I believe that is so because parents never got into long pro protracted arguments and discussions and endless prolonged talk that got nowhere. The parents with whom I've worked have learned to keep their verbal responses compact and to the point and delivered with a great deal of empathy and understanding. I've had some instances where it appeared to the parents that the child was taking them to the very brink. But when it came right down to it, there has never been a suicide nor an attempted suicide. The child moved out in a timely manner, independence was achieved, and in the long run, everyone was happy. Everyone had won." End quote. So just to review the kind of principles here that Dr. Latham talked about, we want to keep the discussion short and to the point. Delivered with lots of empathy and understanding and caring. Uh, you know, I know you'd rather stay at home. Yes, I know that it seems uh, kind of scary to move out on your own. You know, I, I understand it's a lot cheaper for you to live here and you'd rather stay here. Um, but we're not going to go into a lot of discussion about it. We want to avoid arguing. And what that means is don't take the bait. They're going to try to say things. They're going to try to call you names. Your son's going to, our daughter's going to try to jab you in some way verbally to get you engaged in an argument, stay away from it, refuse to argue. Avoid discussing those past failings. It doesn't really matter 
what their last promise was that they broke, or the fact that they did keep three promises in the last year out of 75 or so, you know. But it doesn't matter, right? We don't want to go there. You want to have your expectation to be positive, that the child move out and have a place of his own. And you want to avoid reason, logic, and good sense. And the reason is that, that when it's an emotional issue, these are not your friend. These are your enemy. Right? A simple explanation that you're an adult and it's time for you to have a place of your own. That's enough. So Dr. Latham wrote, I realize that taking steps to rectify such situation carries with it serious risks, particularly where grandchildren are involved. Each case needs to be treated separately and might require professional, including legal help. But the effort is generally worth it. For some children, such an effort might be the only thing that wakes them up to reality. But I would add, beware of depression and bipolar problems with your kids. But even in those situations, you have limited power. And sometimes it takes really dealing with reality for these children to make the transition from dependent child to independent adult. So Dr. Latham wrote again, he says, once on their own, they might very well falter, stumble, and even fall. That's okay. In the process of recovering, they will have learned some valuable survival skills. Striking out on one's own for the first time is generally an uncertain matter, even under the best conditions. It isn't unusual for kids to come home from time to time, check things out to make certain their room is as it was and is ready for reoccupancy should the need arise, and array the cupboard of a few canned goods. It can take a while before they get up to full power. So don't expect 100% poof, everything's fine. Don't begrudge them a few canned goods, you know. Try to keep that, we want to keep an open, positive relationship with the kids. Sure, come on over for a Sunday dinner, we'd love to have you. You know, you just don't want to feed them every day of the week, three times a day. So thank you for watching the launch, Clearing Out the Roost. If you've watched this lesson, then you're probably experiencing a very difficult family situation. And I know this is painful. Right now, there's probably isn't much laughter and love in the family. And that love that's there isn't the feelings that's bubbly and happy and that you enjoy. But our goal as parents is to get past these tough situations to do the right thing and get to a point where we can again experience joy in parenting and in grandparenting. I'm Tom Dozier, wishing you the ability and the strength to exercise the love and limits that you need to at this time to help your child make the difficult transition from dependent child to independent adult. Thank you.